a new wave of anti-Semitic attacks in multiple U.S. cities in just the past week. Anti-Semitic attacks are rattling the Jewish community in Brooklyn. In fact, there have been two days of attacks on the Jewish community here in Southern California. In a van covered in anti-Semitic writing. We'll find some Jews there. We join together today in prayer and in action against anti-Semitism. These past weeks have brought terrible events and very unsettling events for the Jewish community. It is a time for action. It is time for all of us to stand up against anti-Semitism, to call upon others to raise their voices, to end this hatred, and to stand firm against any form of it. In the 121st Psalm, we speak and we pray, I raise up my eyes unto the mountains, from whence shall my help come? My help comes from God Himself, the Creator of heaven and earth. He will not slumber nor sleep, the guardian of the Jewish people. We pray to God, the guardian of the Jewish people. But we remember, that since the first appearance of man on the face of the earth, God sought that we should be Shomer Achi, the guardians for our brothers. We turn to God to protect us, but we turn to each other for protection. And we must rise to that challenge. We must respond in the affirmative and say, yes, Shomer Achi Anochi, I will stand up, I will guard, I will protect, I will protest on behalf of those who are being attacked on behalf of those who are being oppressed. We are grateful for all members of the leadership, all the elected representatives, all of law enforcement, every good citizen of this country who stands up in protest against the terrible acts of anti-Semitism that have shaken the security of our community. We will stand together. We will stand up for each other. And God willing, we will see peace again reign in the land when each of us stands as the guardian, as the protector of the other. Thank you for joining us today for this Day of Action Against Anti-Semitism. I'm Melissa Weiss, Managing Editor for Jewish Insider. I'd like to thank Rabbi Hauer for that beautiful opening prayer. Today, we come together to condemn the rising anti-Semitism we've seen in recent weeks and to call for action to confront this hatred. Following recent events in Israel, we've seen a surge in anti-Semitic incidents taking place throughout the United States and around the world. As we all know, anti-Semitism is not a new phenomenon, nor is it a relic of the past. It's often referred to as the oldest hatred, one that has followed the Jewish community for millennia. But today, we make a statement together that the time to act against this hate is now. Inaction is inexcusable. During our program today, you will hear from Jewish community leaders, allies from other faiths, communities, and civil rights organizations, elected officials, and celebrity guests who are joining in solidarity with the Jewish community to act together against anti-Semitism. We hope that you'll join us by amplifying these calls to action using the hashtag ActAgainstAntiSemitism. You can find a range of graphics and social media posts on www.actagainstantisemitism.org to help spread the message in your community. Additionally, you can click on the Demand Action tab to contact your representatives in Congress, urging them to take swift, concrete action to stop anti-Semitism and show their solidarity with the Jewish community. Thank you again for joining us today and enjoy the program. God bless you, my friends. Pastor Chris Harris here of Bright Star Church, Chicago. Scripture says, a friend loveth at all times and a brother is made for adversity. 
I come on behalf of Bright Star Church, along with many African-American leaders and community constituents, to say that we stand with you against all anti-Semitism and hatred. It was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King who said it best. It's important that we get this message. It is not the words of our enemies that we will remember, but rather the silence of our friends. And we proudly say we will not remain silent. There are three things we want you to get. Number one, you deserve peace and security. Number two, you are absolutely continually in our prayers. But number three, and I hope this is in your heart and in your mind at all times, know that you are not alone. We stand with you. We walk with you. We pray for you and say thank you for being with us when we needed you and now we're with you as you need us. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today for this day of action against anti-Semitism. I want to thank all of our terrific speakers, <clears throat> our amazing partners, everyone who came together to make this happen and to stand shoulder to shoulder with us <clears throat> in the fight against anti-Semitism. Indeed, we are living through some treacherous times as we've seen this staggering rise of anti-Semitic acts in just the past few weeks. They have been brazen and brutal, affecting our family members and friends, our colleagues and neighbors, and all of us in the Jewish community. We know it's scary, but also know this. We are steadfast in our commitment to fight anti-Jewish hate wherever and whenever it happens. America cannot be a place where the Jewish community is afraid to walk to shul on a Saturday morning, to shop in a kosher restaurant, simply to be in public places wearing a kippah. And this isn't just a Jewish concern. It is a violation of all we hold sacred as Americans when any minority feels afraid to be in public life. Simply put, we need everyone from community activists, to faith leaders, to business executives, to social media influencers, to all Americans, to lock arms and stand together and to tell our elected representatives, whether they're in Washington, D.C. or in the local city hall, to demand that they take action against anti-Semitism and to help us stop it in its tracks. We need to say clearly, and cogently, without equivocation, without any qualifications, that anti-Semitism is unacceptable, full stop, and that America must be no place for hate. Hate is unacceptable, and inaction is inexcusable. I stand in solidarity with the Jewish community and anybody else who believes that we must speak out against anti-Semitism. Today, we are calling for action to not only stand in solidarity with the Jewish community, but to turn this movement into policy, which will protect Jewish Americans, their houses of worship, and other communal organizations. There are a number of federal initiatives, like the Nonprofit Security Grant Program, championed by Senators Kirsten Gillibrand and Rob Fortman, the recently passed Jabara Hire No Hate Act, led by Senators Richard Blumenthal, Jerry Moran, and Maisie Hirono, and Representatives John Beyer, Fred Upton, Grace Meng, Judy Chu, and Vern Buchanan, and the Never Again Education Act, sponsored by a bipartisan group led by Senator Jackie Rosen. These pieces of legislation help to combat anti-Semitism on the ground every single day. At this time, we're going to turn our attention to Capitol Hill. Throughout the rest of our program, we'll hear from elected leaders about the role of Congress in fighting anti-Semitism. It is an honor to be joined by a bipartisan group of congressional leaders representing both houses of Congress and the Congressional Task Force on Anti-Semitism. These leaders are championing these efforts in Washington throughout the United States and serve as our voice in the halls of the U.S. Capitol. As House Speaker, I'm honored by ADL's invitation to join you and other Jewish community partners 
for your day of action against anti-Semitism. In the last few weeks, we have seen a disturbing spike in bigotry and violence against Jewish communities across the country and around the world. This hatred is horrific and heartbreaking. We must not hesitate to call it for what it is, anti-Semitism. Americans must come together with urgency and unity to, to condemn these appalling acts of hatred. And we cannot forget that anti-Semitism has always plagued our world, even when the violence does not make headlines. It is our moral duty to confront this evil wherever and whenever it arises, not just when we see it spike. And that is why the United States Congress has, with your help, proudly passed strong anti-hate crime legislation and continually spoken out against anti-Semitism at home and abroad. Today and every day, we stand in solidarity with the Jewish community, and we are grateful for your powerful partnership as we strive to build a world free of anti-Semitism and hatred in all of its forms. Thank you for what you're doing now and for your ongoing leadership over time. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Senator Mitch McConnell. I'm always honored to speak with members of the Jewish community and leaders in the fight against anti-Semitism. I wish we were convening under happier circumstances, but the latest despicable resurgence in anti-Semitism around the world reminds us just how necessary and urgent your work is. Right here in our own country, American Jews are being subjected to more violence, more vandalism, and more harassment. Bigots are trying to make our Jewish brothers and sisters live in fear in their own homes, on their own streets, in their own places of worship. These attacks are not new. Anti-Semitism is as ancient a form of hatred as there is. But the modern world knows too well what happens when this evil is met with silence. In America, we have the right to speak out forcefully against intolerance. And it's not just our right, it's our duty. So this week, I'm co-sponsoring new legislation to combat anti-Semitism. Our new bill would support state and local law enforcement and make sure the bigoted thugs behind anti-Semitic violence meet the full force of the American justice system. It is truly my honor to do everything I can to support the Jewish community today and always. Thank you so much for your good work. God bless you. Hi, everyone. This is Senator Chuck Schumer. Thank you to all the groups who have made this day of action possible, the Jewish Federation of North America, ADL, AJC, Hadassah, the Orthodox Union, the Union for Reform Judaism, Reconstructing Judaism, and the United Synagogues of Conservative Judaism. Thank you all, and thank you to all the Rabbonim and interfaith leaders joining in the solidarity. Friends, it's urgent we come together at this moment. Over the past few years, America has seen once again the pernicious, poisonous and dangerous rise of hate crimes, including anti-Semitism and crimes against Jews on our shores. In recent days in particular, anti-Semitism, the oldest hatred, has dramatically and unfortunately spiked. We're all horrified by the recent anti-Semitic attacks in New York, around the country, and around the globe. So I am glad to join with you today to make clear that this hatred must be stopped. Anti-Semitism is vile, reprehensible, and counter to everything that America stands for. For so long and for so many, America represented something totally different, a land of refuge, a land of promise, opportunity, and tolerance. For so many who have come here looking for a better life. It was true for my family and for so many others. We shouldn't have to remind ourselves of this basic truth, but we live in a time where we must actively work to rekindle the light of tolerance that has kept anti-Semitism at bay. Let's be clear about something else. Combating anti-Semitism is not a partisan issue. Anti-Semitism should be combated whenever and wherever it rears its ugly head. It is wrong and has no place in America. As Senate Majority Leader, the first Jewish American to hold that honor, I promise I will work with President Biden, the Congress, and with all of you to promote policies that will create a fairer, more tolerant, more prosperous country. And every day I work in the Senate, I'll be strengthened by the example of your leadership, your courage, and your dedication. Together, we'll stand proud and loud and united against anti-Semitism. Thank you, and Hatzlacha. The evil scourge of anti-Semitism is on the rise again.
It is spreading in the Middle East, in Europe, and even here in America. Last week in cities across the country, Jewish Americans were viciously attacked simply because they were Jewish. Let's be clear. These bigoted attacks echo a dark history of anti-Semitic violence visited upon the Jewish people. Everyone in a leadership position in the country has a responsibility to confront this ugliness firmly and forcefully. We gave our word never again. We will honor our solemn commitment. Today, we offer a renewed and resounding yes to that question. Private individuals and organizations are stepping up to take action, including by hosting this important rally. Now it is time for leaders in Washington to do the same. Congressman Kustoff and I introduced new legislation to fight anti-Semitism. Our bill will support law enforcement and ensure that the monsters who are attacking Jewish Americans face swift, durable justice. It is troubling that this legislation is necessary in May 2021, but necessary it is. We cannot turn a blind eye to anti-Semitism. Not now, not ever. Make no mistake, anti-Semitism is evil. It contradicts the very essence of who we are as a nation. George Washington wrote in 1790, Americans give bigotry no sanction. Today, we must follow Washington's wise words. We must stand against anti-Semitism wherever it appears. Hey, everybody. My name is Ray Allen, and uh, I played 18 years in the NBA. And over the course of my career, uh, I've played on some OK teams, and I've played on some great teams. I've been able to travel uh, all over uh, this country and, and all over the world for that matter. And uh, one of the most amazing things about traveling is I've been able to sample so many different foods uh, and, and most importantly, meet so many different awesome people. Um, I learned that people do things so in such a different way. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's better or worse, it's just different. And uh, engaging in those differences and those cultures you know, is what makes uh, the world such an awesome place. And uh, I, I sit here today before you uh, denouncing any anti-Semitism, uh, any racism, you know, any prejudices that, that take place. Because what I do know about people is we're all looking to love someone, looking to be loved by someone, uh, looking to raise a family, I'm look, looking to work a job, live in a community where, where you're accepted. It's important that we all understand that because it shouldn't matter what race you, uh, you come from or what religion uh, you practice. We're all in, in, in constant search of finding that commonality amongst each other and trying to make not only America, but this world a better place. And we have to get rid of our, our unconscious biases, uh, the systemic racism that takes place, um, not only in our schools, our workplaces, but in our governments. And it, we have to implore everybody to speak out against anti-Semitism, against racism. Because if it happens to one person, any, any bit of hate or prejudice, if it happens to one person, it could happen to you. It could happen to all of us. And all of us, we have to have a voice. Nothing is being taken away from you because we advocate for someone else. It's just making this world around you a better place. And if we make people around us better, those people will make us better. So we all have to do a better job. Thank you so much and good afternoon. I am Rhoda Smalo, the 27th National President of Adassa, the Women's Zionist Organization of America. On behalf of the 300,000 members, donors, and supporters of Adassa, and in our proud tradition of always standing up against bias, racism, and bigotry, I thank you for signing up for today's virtual rally and standing up against the anti-Semitic violence cutting across the nation. Hadassah is proud to stand with the other organizations who organized this virtual rally. 
We are no strangers to anti-Semitism, nor naive about the perils of hatred, but what for decades lurked in the shadows is spilling out into the mainstream. Social media is polluted with anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism, and white supremacist groups who use it to recruit and inspire violence. Our friends and families in Israel have been subjected to rocket fire for 19 years by terrorists driven to kill Jews because they reject the presence of Jews in the Jewish homeland. Jews in the United States are being attacked by their fellow Americans in major cities and in broad daylight. Synagogues are being vandalized. The world is in crisis. And today we are saying with one voice, enough, enough lies, enough hate, enough bigotry, enough violence. Anti-Semitism, violence and intimidation are unacceptable and un-American. To be clear, those who make Jews the other would like to see the state of Israel wiped off the map and flaunt their anti-Semitic beliefs are the minority, but their ranks are growing, and so too is the threat. I am proud to be a Jew and a Zionist. I am proud to identify publicly as a Jew and a Zionist. I will not be quieted or forced to retreat. I know that you won't be quieted either, and that we are fighting for the America we know and love. Today's rally shows that we are all in this together, and together we will build the more peaceful and tolerant world we want for ourselves and our children and our grandchildren and for every generation to come. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Please stay with us. There's so much more to come and you won't want to miss it. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. This is Imam Abdullah Antepti of Duke University. As a Muslim, as a human being, I am incredibly pained and saddened by the most recent wave of anti-Semitic attacks in this country and around the world. With a very heavy, but more than ever committed heart, I stand in solidarity with our Jewish brothers and sisters as they face the most recent manifestation of this evil again. Hate is unacceptable. And when it breaks out, Inaction is inexcusable. People of all faith and of no faith, people of any amount of ethics and morality, we have to join in forces and fight against antisemitism in its all forms, whichever political camp it comes from or ideological camp it comes from. I support the campaigns like Act Against Antisemitism and I, join, I call all people of ethics and morality and decency to do the same. As we have done it in the past before, we will have many more victories in defeating hate and antisemitism wherever and whenever it shows its ugly face. Thank you and God bless you all. Greetings, Assalamu Alaikum and Salam. My name is Sheikh Musa Drave. I'm the chairman of Islamic Cultural Center of North America, as well as the co-founder of Muslims and Israel Dialogue. We are extremely honored for the relationship that has been built between the Jewish community and the Muslim community in the last two decades. Extremely proud of it, extremely honored. At the same time, the level of antisemitism being felt is so sudden to us, is so embarrassing, is so painful. And both Muslims and the Jews all over the world must come together to fight anti-Semitism. We should never ever allow such um, action to take place anywhere under the sun. We should never ever support anti-Semitic rhetoric. We should never allow or tolerate anti-Semitism, not in our conversation, private or public, not in our action, not using any excuse or pretense, nothing, anti-Semitism, like any other prejudice, any other bias, must be fought together. It is not the responsibility of the Jewish community alone. It is the human responsibility to fight anti-Semitism, to fight prejudice, to come together as one human family. Uh, number one. Number two, the state of Israel. 
has been a challenging to the Muslim world because unfortunately, the Muslim world continue to follow the old rhetoric. Israel is a special place. And the day the Muslim world embrace Israel, that's the day the Middle East will change for the better. Israel has a lot to offer to the Muslim world, to the region, to the world. And we ask every Muslim leader to embrace the state of Israel so that the Palestinians will benefit from what Israel has to offer so that the two-state solution will finally be realized. We are one family. We have one destiny. We have one shared history. Regardless of what one thinks, we are one, we are one, and we are one. And again, we are not allowing anybody to use anti-Semitism in our name. Never again, never again, and never again. We are in complete solidarity with the Jewish brothers and sisters all over the world. And we will do everything within our disposal to making sure that anti-Semitism will never ever be tolerated under any circumstances, under any pre pretense. We are together, we'll fight anti-Semitism, home and abroad. Thank you and God bless you. Hello, everybody, and thanks so much for joining today's very important rally against anti-Semitism. My name is Wajahat Ali, a writer, and as you can see, I'm in beautiful Appalachian country right now. America has a beautiful country. This was here before us. This will be here after us. And while we are here, we have to make sure that we make this space as peaceful and just and decent and equitable for all of us, regardless of our religion, our ethnicity, or our last names. Um, ADL and Jonathan know that I don't always agree with them uh, on everything. They don't always agree with me on everything. But what we do agree with is that anti-Semitism and hate has to end. And that anti-Semitism is often used as the fuel for Islamophobia, for racism, for anti-immigrant fear-mongering and conspiracy theories, such as the deep state, such as the replacement theory. And often, if you've seen both here and in Europe, wherever there's anti-Semitism, Islamophobia is right behind it, and vice versa. And so if we want to make sure that our children, I got three beautiful kids, Ibrahim, Nuseba, and Khadija, want to inherit a country, this beautiful country, where each of them could have an opportunity to be whoever they want, regardless of their skin tone, or their name, or their religion, and have the ability to live free, then it is incumbent upon all of us to unite, like the multicultural Avengers, to combat hate. It doesn't matter if it's Islamophobia, it doesn't matter if it's anti-Semitism, it doesn't matter if it's misogyny, it doesn't matter if it's anti-immigrant hate. We are all in this together. And our common foe, like I tell everyone, the Thanos, is white supremacy. And so we have a shot here and we have a chance here in the United States of America to save ourselves from the narratives that we see happening elsewhere in other countries. Uh, we can guard ourselves against it. But in order to do that, we have to name it, we have to acknowledge it, and we have to come together. And I thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to speak. And I hope uh, we can create a future uh, where all of our children, regardless of their last names, their religion, or their ethnicity, can be the protagonist of the American narrative. Thank you so much. Conway Henderson, interim president and CEO of the Leadership Conference on civil and human rights. A national coalition of more than 220 organizations working to build an America as good as its ideals. One of those ideals is that all communities should feel safe and welcome here. That's why we should all be alarmed by the rise in hate-filled rhetoric and violence targeting the Jewish community. In recent days, reports have tracked an increase in anti-Semitic incidents by 63%. This is part of an horrific trend of rising anti-Jewish hate incidents and crimes over the last few years. In 2018, for example, federal hate crime data recorded the highest number of violent anti-Semitic incidents uh, since data reporting began. It is critical that all of us who are opposed to hate forcefully, unequivocally, and with clarity condemn these attacks. Anti-Semites don't need conflict in the Middle East 
to inflame their bigotry. Anti-Jewish bigotry is as unjustified and wrong as anti-Black, anti-Asian, anti-Muslim bigotry, and all forms of hatred. We must show our support by using the hashtag, act against anti-Semitism. This hatred must stop. Good afternoon. My name is Cindy Benavides, and I serve as the Chief Executive Officer of the League of United Latin American Citizens, LULAC. LULAC is the oldest and largest national Latino civil rights organization in the country. And today, we stand united with ADL, AJC, and the partner organizations to condemn anti-Semitism. We know that hate crimes have been on the increase against our Jewish community, not only in Los Angeles and New York, but nationwide and globally. And today we want to make sure that we are clear that anti-Semitism has no place in America. We stand up against bigotry of all kind. We stand united against hate of any kind. And today, como una comunidad, estamos unidos con nuestra comunidad judía. Thank you so much for all those who have spoken out against anti-Semitism, who had made sure that we are loud and clear, that we condemn hate, bigotry, and anti-Semitism of any kind here in America and across the globe. Please know that as a community, we lock arms with you and we stand united to call attention to what is happening here at home and across the globe. Thank you. Anti-Semitism is surging with alarming incidents of vandalism, harassment, and violence. I join in solidarity with the Jewish community to speak out against anti-Semitism. Hate is unacceptable and inaction is inexcusable. We must show our support and act against anti-Semitism. We at in diaspora are deeply troubled by the reports of increasing anti-Semitism. There is no room for hate in an inclusive America, and we strongly condemn this targeted violence against members of the Jewish community. There is a moral imperative for every one of us to speak out against any instance of a hate crime, for no effective democratic culture should tolerate such actions. And in diaspora, since our inception, we have stood in solidarity against hate. Now, we stand in solidarity with those in the Jewish community who have experienced anti-Semitism. We condemn anti-Semitism in all of its forms because we recognize that an act of hate against any community is an act of hate against us all. We stand today because hatred, indifference, there is no excuse for it. No excuse for the harassment, discrimination or violence anywhere on the basis of race ethnicity, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. We must stand together against hate crimes of any kind, whether against Jews or Palestinians, Asian Americans or African Americans, Latinx Americans or LGBTQ Americans. We say no to hate. We say yes to building a nation of multicultural respect, multi-religious understanding and a sense that equal opportunity and equity guide our future. I join in solidarity. I join in solidarity. I join in solidarity with the Jewish community. With the Jewish community. With the Jewish community to speak out. To speak out. To speak out. Against anti-Semitism. Hate is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. And inaction is inexcusable. Inexcusable. We must show our support. To act, 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 act. And act against anti-Semitism.
Good afternoon. I'm Mark Wilf, Chair of the Board of the Jewish Federations of North America. It's an honor to speak with you all today as we're joined virtually by thousands of Americans, Jewish and non-Jewish, to stand in solidarity against anti-Semitism. Over the last few weeks, we've witnessed a surge in anti-Semitic incidents that has shocked the Jewish community and its allies all over the world. To our allies who have joined us today from other faiths and community, JFNA and Jewish federations throughout North America, thank you for joining your voices with ours to make it clear, anti-Semitism and hate have no place in our communities. Having grown up in a family of Holocaust survivors, I know all too well the ability for this hate to fester and put the lives of Jewish people in immediate danger. This danger did not end with the defeat of Nazi Germany. It's important for everyone to understand that anti-Semitism is not a historical artifact. It's something that's happening around us all day today. The anti-Semitism we've witnessed in the US and around the world, including on social media, echoes the experience of my parents and grandparents during the Holocaust and must be confronted head on. Federations are deeply committed to building diverse, respectful communities for today and for the future. Today, we join together to call for action by our community and our elected leaders to address the scourge of anti-Semitism and to stand together against this oldest form of hatred. To the Jewish community in the US, Israel, and around the world, we are making a statement today that we will not be intimidated by this hatred and we will rise against it to build a better world together. On behalf of JFNA and the Jewish Federations, I wanna thank the government and communal leaders who are standing with us today. And thank you all for joining us for this important program. I'd like to thank Mark Wilf of JFNA for sharing his story and all of the community leaders who share these powerful reflections on the importance of allyship in acting against anti-Semitism. We're fortunate to be joined today by a representative from President Biden's administration, Cedric Richmond, director of the White House Office of Public Engagement. We'd like to thank President Biden and his administration for their leadership in combating anti-Semitism, and especially thank Mr. Richmond for joining us today to share the White House's commitment to fighting this hate. The organizations involved in today's program look forward to working with the President, the Vice President, and the whole team on meaningful steps to combat anti-Semitism. Thank you to the organizers for the invitation to be with you today. It is my honor to bring you greetings from President Biden who stands with you against the scourge of anti-Semitism, now and always. We're deeply concerned about the spike in anti-Semitic attacks at home and around the world, and we're working daily to counter this disturbing trend and keep everyone safe. Anti-Semitism is an assault on our humanity. We see that in the despicable attacks on Jewish individuals and institutions. And make no mistake, hate harms us all, Whenever we allow anyone to be targeted simply for who they are, everyone is at risk. We must reject the poison of anti-Semitism and affirm that every individual is of equal value and infinite worth. Anti-Semitism is also an assault on constitutional values. The First Amendment says that people have the right to exercise their religion freely. When you cannot practice your faith without fear, you cannot practice it freely. When you cannot wear a yarmulke or a headscarf or a turban without worrying about getting beat up, you cannot practice your faith freely. When you cannot go to your religious school or house of worship without fearing that you will be gunned down, you cannot practice your faith freely. And to paraphrase Dr. King, when anyone's rights are denied, everyone's rights are endangered. So we won't be silent about anti-Semitism. It's our problem, not the problem of just one community. We stand with you. In addition to speaking out, we must act. The Biden administration will continue to combat anti-Semitism and all forms of hate 
and bigotry. Just last week, President Biden signed a new hate crimes bill into law. That law gives us new tools that will help us prevent hate crimes and respond effectively when they occur. The Department of Justice, led by Attorney General Merrick Garland, is playing a central role in implementing this legislation. And Attorney General Garland has made combating hate crimes a priority. Also, our Department of Homeland Security is meeting regularly with communities that are threatened, including Jewish communities. DHS has been briefing security directors from the Jewish community and preparing resources that individuals can use to keep themselves and their organizations safe. DHS is also making sure that nonprofits know how to apply for grants that will protect their institutions. These are just a few of the steps that the Biden administration is taking to protect precious lives. Scripture says that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. We pledge to work for you and with you to secure these blessings for everyone. Thank you again to Cedric Richmond and to President Biden for sharing the work being done at the White House to address anti-Semitism throughout the United States and around the world. As we continue to reflect on allyship and the communities that stand with Jewish Americans in the face of rising anti-Semitism, we're fortunate to be joined by leaders of other faiths who join us in solidarity and will share their prayers and calls to action for rising to this moment. Cardinal Timothy Dolan here, the Archbishop of New York. I'm I'm very grateful to our allies at the Orthodox Union and the Hadassah, the ADL, the American Jewish Com uh, Committee, and the Jewish Federations of uh, North America. I'm very grateful for your invitation to be part of this act against anti-Semitism today. And I appreciate your invitation, although it's an extraordinarily sad occasion. Um, I just want you to know that uh, we in the Catholic family believe that it's unconscionable, unconscionable, that our Jewish neighbors are once again suffering from this newest wave of anti-Semitic attacks. You might remember that uh, earlier this year, our Holy Father, uh, Pope Francis, condemned, and I quote, the barbaric resurgence of cases of anti-Semitism. And I want to unite again my voice with, with uh, his. Indifference, indifference is our enemy. And we Catholics cannot be indifferent to the suffering and the anguish of our Jewish brothers and sisters. God, God calls us all to accompany the afflicted in the, their hour of need. And we're honored and enthusiastic in standing with you in solidarity and act against anti-Semitism. Uh, we know the hard way, and nobody knows it more than our Jewish neighbors, that hatred and violence bear no fruit and that uh, an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. So you've asked me to say a prayer and I do, I do so uh, very heartily. Dear God and Father of us all, you've, you've taught us through your revelation to the people of Israel uh, that uh, the sacredness of all human life and the dignity of the human person is your will and your mandate. And we reaffirm that today as we ask your guidance and inspiration, as we advocate on behalf of our Jewish brothers and sisters, and as we ask your guidance and a sense of wisdom and fortitude in speaking out against these attacks and in acting in concert together as children of you, our Father, in uh, standing against this and doing everything possible to see that it ends. God bless you all. Greetings, I'm Walter Kim president of the National Association of Evangelicals. It's an honor to participate in this rally. And I want to join in solidarity with the Jewish community in speaking out against anti-Semitism. There is a long and lamentable history of violence and hate against the Jewish people. And it is exhausting to stand against and oppose such injustice. I want you to know you are not alone. We stand with you. And now that the ugliness of hate has arisen again, we want to say that whether in word or in deed, violence or verbal abuse, this is not acceptable. We share a fundamental hum humanity together. And because of that, 
we bear the image of God and the dignity that should be afforded to all is a responsibility of us all. So as a Christian, I want to say I share, along with many, a deep longing for the biblical vision of Isaiah, that swords would be turned into plowshares, and of Micah, that everyone would be able to sit under vine or fig tree in safety. Please know that we stand with you. We pray alongside with you, and we support action that would oppose anti-Semitism in any form. We are with you. God bless. Hello, friends. I'm David Harris of the American Jewish Committee. Together with our colleagues at Hadassah, JFNA, ADL, and the Orthodox Union, we're pleased and proud to host this National Action Day against anti-Semitism. Much as we're angry and furious that the day was necessary in the first place. I'm speaking to you, as some of you can see from the backdrop, from Israel, where AJC came in solidarity with Israel after the more than 4,000 rockets were fired at this country. I'm standing not far from a place just across the street where 21 Jews were killed almost 20 years ago to the day, simply for the fact that they were Jews and out for dancing at a discotheque called the Dolphin Area. I'm also standing not far from a mosque, one of hundreds of mosques here in Israel that protect the right of worship for Muslims indeed, for all people. We're here because we have to stand together as a Jewish community, as one, as a nation, because we cannot accept what we have seen in our own country of late. We knew there was anti-Semitism. Of that, there had been no doubt. Some pointed entirely to the right and saw only anti-Semitism there. Some pointed entirely to the left and saw anti-Semitism only there. We have been saying for years, if not decades, we Jews must be swivel-headed. We have threats coming from many directions and taking many forms. But what unites them all is the fact that the Jew, whether as an individual or as a collective community or a Jewish state, are being targeted. And that requires not just our anger, though anger is well placed. It requires our unity, something we haven't seen enough of in the Jewish community for too long. Our unity to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm, and to join together with other Americans of goodwill who understand that any form of hatred, any form of racism, including anti-Semitism, including anti-Zionism, must be confronted as a challenge, not just to Jews, but to our very concept of a nation. AJC has been there, is there, and will be there, together with you, together with others, to make sure that we, our message is heard, our message is heard loud and clear, we enlist as many friends as we can. We call on officials to say no to anti-Semitism and to mean it when they say it. And together, let's ensure that we prevail. Yo, what's going on, y'all? Nick Cannon here uh, to speak about some egregious violations that are going on in humanity. As we all know, um, it's never a right time to hate or discriminate. As someone who has dealt with my own outspokenness and controversy over the last year, uh, I've learned a great deal about how hurting people is never gonna help the overall idea of bringing us all together on this one planet that we have. So whether it's anti-Semitism, whether it is actually racism, anything that we are experiencing, uh, your views on Israel or Palestine, you can't allow that negative energy to fester with inside you, to want to hate another individual, to want to act in violence. That's never, never the right thing to do. And as we all know, uh, we got to operate as a brotherhood. Uh, humanity, one, one opportunity to understand each other. Um, we have so many more similarities than we have differences. And I'm learning that daily. Uh, and I'm sending love and admiration to all communities uh, that are dealing with the travesty of le losing children, losing lives, losing loved ones. Praying for you.
Let's go. Hi, my name is Erin Foster. I have been Jewish for about two years. I converted when I got married. Um, my husband comes from Russian immigrant parents who fled Russia because they weren't allowed to be Jewish there. And when I converted and I went through the process, I really felt like I couldn't follow through with it until I knew that I was going to really connect to the idea of being Jewish. And so I asked every question and I pushed back on everything. And I started every argument and our rabbi said like, that is what being Jewish is about, is asking questions and pushing back on things and not living by the status quo and finding your own personal identity. And so then I became Jewish and I, I don't know if I connected to it right away. You know, it felt like something that was very disconnected for me. It was something I had learned about, but it wasn't something that I had really was carrying in my, in my blood until the last two weeks, um, watching the rise in anti-Semitism and the violence against Jews in the street and the hatred towards Israel, it really made me feel Jewish for the first time. Uh, it made me really feel connected to Israel and how important it is to protect it and also how important it is to get the right information out there and how easy it is for people to tap into their hatred towards Jewish people. And now I really want to be part of the solution. Um, I've learned about being Jewish. I'm now experiencing what it feels like to be Jewish. And I really want to participate in a better conversation around finding peace. And it's really important for Jews to speak out right now. And it's really important for non-Jews to speak out right now because it is scary how quickly and easy it is for people to slip back into something that felt like we would never experience again. So we have to stand up against anti-Semitism and against hatred for all people, Jews included, non-Jews included. And so if you care about one issue, you have to care about everybody's issue. You have to care about it if it affects you and you have to care about it if it doesn't directly affect you. That's how we can really make a difference. So we need to stand against anti-Semitism. Thank you, Nick and Aaron, for using your platforms to raise awareness of anti-Semitism, its impact, and the ways that we can bring people together to understand and respond to it in their communities. Next, we are joined by members of the Bipartisan Congressional Task Force on Anti-Semitism, who will share their work on Capitol Hill and the work that must still get done to act against anti-Semitism. I'd like to thank Senators Jackie Rosen and James Langford and Representatives Ted Deutsch and Chris Smith for their commitment to leading these efforts in both houses of Congress. These leaders need your help to mobilize their colleagues around these critical issues. Be sure to click Demand Action on actagainstantisemitism.org to call on your members of Congress to take action to stop anti-Semitism. One of the asks you'll make on your calls is for support of the bipartisan Langford Rosen Resolution and the Deutsch Meng Fitzpatrick letter about combating anti-Semitism. Hello, I'm Jackie Rosen, the third Jewish woman and the first former synagogue president to serve in the United States Senate. I'm also the co-founder and co-chair of the Senate's Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism. Right now, no issue threatens Jewish communities more than the alarming rise of anti-Semitism and violent extremism. Over the last few years, we've seen neo-Nazis marching through the streets. We've seen synagogues attacked, and we've seen Jews in the act of prayer who have had their lives taken from us. And over the last two weeks, ADL has tracked a 63% increase in anti-Semitic incidences compared with just two weeks before. Attacks on Jewish places of business, attacks on Jewish community members, foreign leaders invoking anti-Semitic slander and conspiracies, and elected officials right here at home diminishing the horrors that Jews endured during the Holocaust. We have a responsibility to fight back against this anti-Semitic bigotry. We have a responsibility to condemn this rise in anti-Semitic violence hateful harassment unconditionally and unequivocally. And we have a responsibility to take action. 
The bipartisan Senate task force I founded is doing critical work to address this urgent issue. Just last week, the heads of both the Senate House task forces to combat anti-Semitism united to send a bipartisan message that anti-Semitic hate has no place in our country. But we must do more. We must swiftly nominate and confirm a qualified ambassador to monitor and combat anti-Semitism so that the U.S. continues to lead the fight against anti-Semitism. We must fully implement the Never Again Education Act in order to advance accurate Holocaust education and counter Holocaust denial and distortion. And we must ensure that the Department of Homeland Security's nonprofit security grant program has enough funding to protect houses of worship, schools, and community centers from anti Semitic violence. I call on all elected leaders, faith leaders, civil society leaders, and all those who are here today to join me in rejecting hate to join our task force in standing against anti-Semitism in all its forms. This is something we must come together to confront head on. Our safety, the safety of our communities, and the safety of our children, well, they all depend on us. Thank you. We as Americans believe in the absolute right of individuals to be able to have a faith, change their faith, or to live no faith at all. It's basic religious liberty. We also stand by the values that we protect every person as they live out their faith and their heritage. That's why as an American leader, that's why as just an American, it's so incredibly important to me to be able to protect against anti-Semitism. But we can't just talk about it. We have to do something. That's why Senator Jackie Rosen and I formed the Bipartisan Task Force Combating Anti-Semitism. Together, we've combined 54 members of the Senate, 27 Republicans, 27 Democrats, to be able to consistently speak out against anti-Semitism. We've contacted world leaders, we've contacted national leaders here in the United States, members of the press, individual communities to be able to speak out against the alarming rise in anti-Semitism here in the United States and around the world. We stand with you and we'll continue to be able to stand for this most basic of American values to honor the rights of individuals to be able to have and live their faith. God bless you and we stand together against anti-Semitism. Hi everyone, it's Congressman Ted Deutsch. I wish we didn't have to be here rallying in defense of Jewish communities around the world and right here in our own country, but we do. We always do, because none of us will remain silent as Jews are intimidated, threatened, attacked, and even killed because of who we are. American Jews have faced an 80% spike in anti-Semitic incidents over the last month. 80%. But I'm sure I don't have to tell you, you know that. Look at the news, the horrific videos on attacks on Jews because they're Jews in Los Angeles and New York, attacks on synagogues across the country. Just watch the videos online of the violent attacks, the pictures of signs saying Hitler was right, the endless hateful social media posts. All of it needs to stop. American Jews are on edge. And as the co-chair of the House Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism, I will work in Congress and with the administration to ensure that combating anti-Semitism, standing up for, for our community against these awful attacks is a priority. We will ask the administration to use all available hate crime laws, including the No Hate Act that President Biden just signed into law last week to protect our community, and go after the perpetrators. But we also must call on local officials, community and religious leaders, law enforcement officers, and everyone with a conscience to stand with their Jewish communities and do their part to reject anti-Semitism. Thanks for what you're doing on an individual level, pushing back against misinformation on social media, and thanks for what you're doing as an organization to protect us. We have a lot of work to do, but we will succeed because we are standing together. Thanks for inviting me. Good afternoon, I'm Congressman Chris Smith. 
and I strongly believe that the explosion of anti-Semitism in the United States and worldwide must be exposed and rigorously combated. On this day of action against anti-Semitism, special thanks to the Orthodox Union, ADL, AJC, Jewish Federations, and Hadassah for their extraordinary work and for organizing today's rally. Two decades ago, the great Jewish human rights leader and former political prisoner in the Soviet Union, Natan Sharansky, testified at one of my congressional hearings on combating anti-Semitism. And he said, and I quote, there are two important components in this new phenomenon of anti-Semitism. One is using an anti-Israeli campaign for strengthening anti-Semitism, and the other is classical anti-Semitism, the old deep primitive prejudices against Jews. Mr. Sharansky proposed a simple formula for exposing anti-Semitism, masquerading as mere policy differences with the nation of Israel, and he called it the 3D test, demonization, double standard, and delegitimization. All three manifestations of anti-Semitic hate are on full display today as violence against Jews erupts on America's streets and throughout the world. The unprovoked massive Hamas missile attacks on Israeli citizens earlier this month was an act of extremist terrorism, and the loss of Israeli lives was only mitigated by the Iron Dome missile defense system and a justified counterattack by the Israeli Defense Forces. Israel, like every other nation on Earth, will never allow its people and cities to be destroyed by thousands of missiles without deploying whatever it takes to stop the violence. Anti-Semitism in the United States, as you all know so well, which has already been worsening, according to the FBI, more than 60 percent of all anti-religious hate crimes in the U.S. are directed against Jews, is now exploding as never before. People of conscience must stand in solidarity with our Jewish brothers and sisters against this rising tide of hate. Our words and deeds must be clear and bold. We must, we must resolutely reject anti-Semitism in all of its ugly forms and manifestations. Reconstructionist Jews believe that we have an obligation to build the Jewish community and the world that we want our children to live in. It must not be a world of hatred that targets Jews or any other minority. Right now and always, we stand shoulder to shoulder to fight against hate and to fight for a world where every human being, all of us, can be safe. A world where all of us are treated with respect, a world where all of us are seen as beings created in God's image. Our people have been violently attacked on the streets of this country that we call home. Anti-Semitism is not a problem of the past, it's here now. Violent attacks on Jews must be condemned, never rationalized. These attacks must be combated whether they come from the left or the right or anywhere in between. Harsh rhetoric demonizing Israel invites such attacks and are quite different from legitimate criticism of policies. We appreciate all of the leaders who have spoken up against these hate crimes and look forward to hearing from many more. Doing so will not diminish your commitment to human rights for other communities, it will enhance it. We are an incredibly diverse Jewish community. We pray, think, believe, earn, and vote differently but when it comes to violent anti-Semitic attacks against our people, we stand as one. Chazak ve'ematz, be strong and of good courage. These are the words that Moses spoke to Joshua in ancient times. Today we are strengthened as we come together as a community and we are full of courage knowing that our allies stand with us in our fight against anti-Semitism and that we stand together against all forms of hatred and bigotry in our country. Thank you for being here and thank you to our allies for their help in this struggle. Chazak ve'ematz, 
Let us be strong and full of courage. Shalom. As we've heard throughout our program, there's work to be done to protect the Jewish community around the world to put an end to this hate. But we are not alone in this fight. In closing, I'm thinking of the famous Jewish teaching from Pirkei Avot. You're not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to desist from it. Each of us has an individual and collective responsibility to take part in the work of combating anti-Semitism. To that end, we hope you will take action on actagainstantisemitism.org by clicking the Demand Action tab and contacting your representatives in Congress, urging them to take swift, concrete action to stop anti-Semitism and show their solidarity with the Jewish community. Thank you for joining today's virtual rally and for being a part of the Day of Action Against Anti-Semitism. The day isn't over yet, so let's get back to work.